Okay, here we go with our last lesson in Chapter 4, Lesson 4.8. Remember, we've actually already done 4.9. We did that earlier with Lesson 4.3. So even though this isn't the last lesson in the book, it's the last one we're going to talk about. You will have a quiz later on over Lesson 7 and 8 and then freeze patterns. Okay, we talked about freeze patterns as well in a, in a different time. Okay. And keep in mind, you will have a video quiz on this. There's going to be two different videos for this. First one, we're just going to talk through four theorems and just address them real quickly. Second video, we're going to prove two of the theorems, and then we're going to give you some examples, some algebra-type examples. All right, so here we go. We're talking about isosceles and equilateral triangles. Okay, and our first theorem is theorem 4.7. It's called the base angles theorem. Now, most of the time when we say base angles theorem, we are talking about triangles. We do later on have a base angle theorem for isosceles trapezoids as well. So we could call this the base angle theorem for isosceles triangles, but usually when we just say base angles theorem, we realize, yes, we're talking about triangles. All right? So let me zoom out a little bit so we can get all this in the picture at the same time. All right. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. Okay, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. Another way to say this, if a triangle is isosceles, remember, two sides of a triangle are congruent means it's isosceles, then the base angles are congruent. All right, now, why do we call them the base angles? Remember, when we had a picture like this, these two sides were called the legs, and this down here was called the base. The base did not have to be at the bottom. Okay, if my triangle was facing this way, these are still the legs. This is still the base, even though it's not at the bottom. All right, the base angles are the two angles that touch the base, the base side. Okay, this angle up here does not touch the base angle, uh, the base side at all, so it's not called a base angle. Our book usually refers to this as the vertex angle. It's not my favorite term because every corner of a triangle is actually called a vertex, but if they use the term vertex angle, this is what they're talking about. Okay, so we've got leg, leg, base, base angle, base angle. The theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, okay, they are, then the angles opposite those sides. So the easiest way to figure out which angles is to literally just draw an arrow across the triangle okay, and draw another arrow across the triangle, and it's going to point right to the two congruent angles. So let me zoom in so you can see what those arrows look like. Okay, see how those arrows are pointing to angle A and angle C? So this angle, angle A, is congruent to this angle, angle C. And that's what the base angle theorem tells us. If you have two congruent sides, then you also have to have two congruent angles. Which two congruent angles? The ones across from the sides. All right? This theorem does have a converse. Okay, not every theorem works with a converse, but this is one of them that does. I'm going to prove these things to you in the second video, so if you aren't sure why they work, just be patient. We'll get there. Theorem 4.8, the base angles converse theorem, or our book calls it the converse to the base angles theorem. This one says if two angles of a triangle are congruent. Remember, converse means we switch the order. So up here, we started with sides. We ended with angles. Here, we're going to start with angles, and we're going to end with sides. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Another way to say it, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is isosceles. The only problem with just saying the triangle is isosceles is you've got to be able to know which sides are congruent. So once again, it's across. So draw your arrows if you need to. So from this angle, go across the triangle. And it tells you which side. From this angle, we go across the triangle. Okay, so once again, if I zoom in on this picture, okay, you can see that coming from the angle across the triangle gives me side XZ. All right, and then coming from here, working across the triangle, I end up at side XY. Those are the congruent sides of this isosceles triangle. That means YZ is the base, okay, which makes sense because these would be the base angles then. All right. Now, what I get every now and then from somebody is something that looks like this. Okay, so we got a triangle, and I tell you that these angles are congruent. And they do something like this. 
and I do something like this, okay? That's not working your way across the triangle. Now, you, those are actually the correct congruent sides, but that's not why. Or maybe I'll get something like this. Okay, and they'll say, well, I'm gonna come across this, and I'm gonna work here, okay? Now, don't ever work kind of on a curve there. You always work straight across your triangle, okay? It makes it very, very, very simple, okay? So let me show you just a real couple quick examples. And then we're going to look at two more real quick theorems. And then that's, this video is going to end and we're going to look at the other one. Okay, so you should have something like this. Go ahead and copy this down. I've got triangle JKL with two congruent sides. I've got triangle PQR with two congruent angles. And the only question I want you to be able to figure out here is which two angles in this triangle have to be congruent? This first one. And then over here, which two sides in this triangle have to be congruent? All right, so... Copy these down, and I want you to try to answer these questions. Pause the video, answer them, come back, check your answers. Okay, you should have paused the video. So now we're going to look and see if you got your answers correct. So once again, when you have this, you work across the triangle. So up there, over there. Angle K is congruent to angle J. Now, if you want to use three letters, that's fine. When you say angle K, you have to put K in the middle. So angle J, K, L. And when we want to say angle J, we need to put J in the middle. So K, J, L. Something like that would be acceptable as well. Okay, over here on this one, same idea. We work across the triangle. So PR, I have an arrow pointing right at that, is congruent to QP. Those are the legs of this isosceles triangle. All right? We're going to do a little bit more of these in the next video regarding some algebra type work. Okay? But here, just a very basic, very basic example of how do you decide which angles are congruent and how do you decide which sides are congruent. Just draw your arrows across the triangle. Makes it extremely easy to figure out. Okay, two more here real quick. Remember corollary, we saw this once before, the corollary to the triangle sum theorem. So we have a corollary to the base angle theorem. Corollary is a theorem that's so easy when it comes from something else. So the base angle theorem said if you've got two congruent sides, you have to have two congruent angles. This says if a triangle is equilateral, three congruent sides, then it is also equiangular, three congruent angles. So if I give you this, well, if you want to draw the arrows, that's fine. That points to angle B, that points to angle A, that points to angle C, we have all three. Okay. This triangle was equilateral, it's also equiangular. Angle A is congruent to angle B, which is also congruent to angle C. And we could skip angle B and just say, if we do something like this, angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay? So it doesn't matter which two angles you pick. If you have three congruent sides, equilateral, then you also have to have three congruent angles. Now this only works for triangles. If you get to a, a four-sided figure and it has four congruent sides, it does not have to have four congruent angles. A rhombus, we're going to learn about these in another chapter, but a rhombus has four congruent sides. It does not have to have four congruent angles. All right? Next corollary is for the converse one. So remember, converse just means we switch the order. So this said equilateral first and equiangular second. If a triangle is equiangular, put it first, then it's also equilateral. Okay, three congruent angles means, once again, if you want to draw the arrows, that's fine. You don't really have to, but you have to have three congruent sides, XY to YZ to XZ. Okay, that's it for this, uh, these theorems. These ones are supposed to be really, really simple. Okay, but I have put a question on a quiz before that says something like this. If a triangle is equiangular, does it have to be equilateral? And people have put no. This theorem tells you if a triangle is equiangular, then yes, it has to be equilateral. If a triangle is equilateral, then yes, it has to be equiangular. Now keep in mind, this only works for triangles. Once again, this does not work for any other shape. You could have a four-sided figure that has equal angles, like a rectangle, four right angles, but does not have four equal sides. We know that a rectangle does not have to have four equal sides. So this only works on triangles. All right, that's it for the first video. Make sure you watch both this one and the second one, however. All right? Watch that second video and come ready to work in class.